Good morning everybody again. Okay, I figured I'd do something a little bit different today. Instead of going over video cards, we're gonna go over I'm gonna go um go over a motherboard. And it is the um Asus Rogue Strix B550E. The reason I wanted to do an overview or talk about this board is because there is a F version. Almost looks identical, but there is there is some differences and this I'm gonna probably say would classify as a mid-range a higher mid-range motherboard than the F and after we open it up I haven't even looked at it myself I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff in here and you know something? I know what it is. It's cables and stuff. What we want to look at is the board. There's a manual probably underneath. Yes, the Rogue Strix manual. And being an AMD board, I actually was going to sell this but I decided I'm gonna keep this and put it on my wet bench. So, all right, so I got this out. The things I wanna point out on this real quick are some of, the, some of the features I think are definitely better than with the F version. The first thing is we have six layers PCB, probably double copied. It has some very nice aluminum heat sinks on it. The F has one less um, fan connector, or it would be an auxiliary probably for a pump. There's also one over here, which is great to see because some of the, the the boards I've been looking at lately, they haven't been putting them back down here. And it's a lot easier if you're running a fan on your CPU to put it over here. Okay. Another thing that's a big plus for this board is it comes with a USB-C on the board. Two more USB adapters or plugs on the board. It comes with its Supreme FX sound. And it definitely has a good high-end power solution. And we'll get to the back of this in a second. Oh, there's some other things definitely I want to talk about. Okay. I've had a chance to look at it it has high-speed data connection as well as Wi-Fi it has a C port on the back it has more USB 3.2 it has a couple more versus the other one as well as the ones on the board the F version does have some LED lights right where these are. Everybody knows they've seen these before, the debugging lights. The thing about this one, it also gives a little LED for the codes. That's a big plus. The F doesn't. Another important thing that I found on this board versus the F that you have Four point your PC your PCIe 4.0 right here. Both this one the F won't support SLI or Crossfire. The E does. The thing with that is if you run Crossfire, you'll run into the problem of going from 16 to two eights. So I don't know if it would maybe with 3090s and crossfire it might benefit i don't know 
I think most people would probably with the price of GPUs now, most people are going to stay with just um, one anyways. This does support on the M.2 PCI Express, um, PCIe 4.0, which is directly to the CPU. You have those lanes. When you go down here, it'll become 3.0. So you're probably going to get about 3,000. Your speed is going to be about 3,000 on this versus quite a bit faster on the top. But it's still well worth having it down here because of just the space that you save. Okay. And what I did notice too on this is it has two C's, high speed data transfer USB C's. Again, the board comes in its typical Strix black with a little bit of gray in there. A little bit of red kind of pops, looks nice. Um, some RGB or ARGB over here. And I think there's a little, yes, there is a little bit right here, so it's not overwhelming. Another thing that this board has that is really, really important is the F is 12 and 2 with the VRAM. This is 14 and 2 big plus there so you have 14 and 2 supporting the PCIe 14 doing its thing there's another USB over here for high speed and versus the F model this one has two more it does it has two more ARGB connectors on the board all right I know I've been taking a few breaks today my doorbell keeps ringing okay back to the M.2 the bottom one it does support PCIe Gen 3 and it does connect directly to the CPU so when the system is going and programs or things are being utilized you could run into a little bandwidth um, issue with that I don't think it would be noticeable but it's possible um, not being an X570 you have no fan on here Another thing is, is they keep putting, I keep noticing this. These, these, these CPUs have a display and a USB for graphics. Okay, you see that okay? Good, that looks good. Um, an AMD chip CPU doesn't support graphics. You'd need to get an APU. And eventually, I guess they're going to become an outward one. I'm sure they will. But as of right now, the board is fully dependent. Like versus, say, I know I've been getting a lot of ASUS stuff lately. But the Prime here. It's a Z490A. Um, Intel supports onboard video but we don't want to get too far off track again another thing I want to point out that the F doesn't have is the lower PCIe doesn't the F doesn't have a full metal bracket on it the very far one I mean this the, these would be great for putting adapter cards or something for for additional m.2s if you're really looking to save on a lot of storage um, The board just, the, the, the E versus the F, I'm going to have to say that the F is a mid-range board, period. It's, it's, it has some good features, but this is definitely 
has better features it's a step up and you'll see that in the price difference and I think there's probably what 260 265 okay as far as power delivery 1 8 pin connector 1 4 pin connector myself running the 3090 the 3080 video cards I've overclocked them as far as I could just for a short time because I'm really and I've said this before I'm not big into overclocking I've never had to hook up a second power connector um, just never had to do it I really don't know if it's even necessary to tell you the truth unless you're gonna be running nitrous um, Oh, not nitrous. I'm sorry, nitrous. I, I used to have that in a 69 Nova nitrous oxide. <laughs> okay. Liquid nitrogen. Then you would probably need to add the additional four. Some of them are coming through with a six. Some of them are coming through with two eights. All the capacitors on here are definitely high-end Japanese-made capacitors. I'm pretty sure the VRAM is all certified at least at 60 that would be 60 60 amp I think the way they go by that you can see all the chips all the capacitors on here are well made well lined up I've seen some boards that were just nightmares Asus I, I like I said before I'll say it again Asus really does pay attention to their detail can't take that away from them okay SATAs I like to see this it has six SATAs there's, there's really not a lot of use as far as I mean yes SATAs are being used but four would be plenty but six is okay because you got it just on this one side they ain't running a whole bunch of them down here so you've got some system fan head is here a three pin ARGB 5 volt a four pin RGB 12 another four pin RGB 12 and another three pin 5 volt RGB system fan system fan water pump and system fan so the reason I say auxiliary or water pump for you for those of you that know you already know what I'm gonna say the auxiliary or the one for the water block that controls the pump on the water pump it doesn't adjust with the power of the board it's a constant power basically it's at full power okay to get back to the VRAM a lot of the motherboard companies are now sharing the VRAM so like with the Asus it's a it's a 12 and 2 off this one actually a 14 and 2 they do kind of um, they, they share it so they, they each one is sharing basically they're called chokes it triples up so they can get those higher numbers it's kind of not really what I would call true true 14 and 2 but it basically converts the board into acting that way and giving you that performance okay so we're off of that I don't want to get into too many technical details because we can go visit Steve at Gamers Nexus and he will blow your mind with some of the stuff he comes out with. I mean, he can go on for an hour talking about little details that I can't even think about. All right. So again, it is a very steady, sturdy board. I like it. It's a nice clean board, nice layout. Just remember, if you're going to start running 
second M dot twos, you're going to be sharing your band with 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 um, the other PCIEs. So you may lose a little bit. To tell you the truth, I do it on my MSI board. I have a I have a second M dot two, and I don't really. I mean, if you get into bringing up your voltages, bringing up benchmarks, and you start looking at the numbers as you run it. Say we are downloading some large um, compressed file. You'll see the difference in the speeds when you start sharing bandwidth. Um, on the test, you will see it in the numbers. In all real life scenarios, I don't think you're going to see it because we're talking hundreds, thousands of a second. So, not the biggest deal in the world, folks. I think it's worth it to have a second M.2 to tell you the truth. Okay, I haven't seen the back of the board. This is my first time as well, people. We're in virgin territory. All right. This is different. Got a little racing stripe across the back. Doesn't have much for a heat shield. Um, the Unify, I, I did a review a while back, but I had to send the board back and I'm, I've got it, actually I've got it sitting in a box, the, the new one. I'll do a review on that, the Unify, it's an MSI board, it's really, really nice. The whole back here is covered with a nice heat shield, board armor, whatever your preference may be. Okay, so... It comes with the standard back plate on it for the CPU. Now, okay, on this, I've always, uh, I don't know when board companies are going to get away from giving the, this is kind of like an old Intel setup. When you start getting into water blocks and stuff, I'm sure you've seen different brackets. I should have taken some out. Some of them will hook right on. Those are the ones I like because then you don't have to unscrew stuff. And other ones, you have to put a different bracket on the back, screw through it. And sometimes it takes four screws. Sometimes it's a different adjustment. Sometimes you have some rises that come up off the board. Um, yeah, they, they've got a variety of things. I have seen a couple other reviewers talking about this board and one of them wasn't too thrilled about it only having two 10 gigabyte um, data transfer port. I think that's really good actually. Um, some uh, Most boards don't even have that. So you have two on the back. Again, you have one right here. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen this. I, I will be back in one second. Okay. I guess I learned my lesson about that. What I was going to do was show you a little connector that I have, but I can probably explain it to you just as well. Okay, right here, you can see a USB-C on the board. Now, some boards don't have this on it. That connects to the front of your case if you have a, a little C plug on the top or the side of your case. But what they do make, and you can get them at Amazon, Newegg, any of the following, is they make a little tiny adapter. It's a 19 pin. They call this a 20 or a 20 19. It, it would be 20, but one's over here in the corner. How do I do this? You can probably see it in the corner. There's one missing. Anyways, this little board has, you know, like the little blue plug. I'm sure you've seen it. That goes in there, clips in, that goes to your front panel. Well, you've got a few extra ones usually around. But if you want to do away with that because you have plenty of USBs already, you can get this little adapter. You plug it in there. It's a little board. A little bit board made with PCB with this USB C plug on it. 
I thought it was kind of cool when I seen it, and I wish I had it. I, I can't remember what the heck I did with the bloody thing. I mean, I've got shelves full of stuff over here, so I should have taken it out. Anyways, well, that's my bad. But it's basically the same thing. It's just a little board. It's thinner than the motherboard, obviously. And it has this little C plug soldered onto it. And I use one on um, my other motherboard, as a matter of fact, because I wanted to get my C connector for my, um, for my iPhone connected. And I wanted to use it for a charger and data transfer. So I did plug it in. It worked flawless. It, it was great. So there we have it. Some of the features of this board. Some of the goods. Not many bads. It's not their highest end board. It's definitely not their lowest. I would have to give it uh, all day long. I'm going to have to say this is in the high end of their mid-range boards. The F, I'm going to say it's down in the lower part because it is missing some things. It is it doesn't have fully so, um, supported bracket. It does up here. The way it handles the memory is definitely different. It has fewer USBs on the back. This one comes with a BIOS reset, a flashback, and a BIOS button right here. And that must be the little light, that little hole right there. And you would put right in here is where you would put your bios your your flash stick your flash drive to do your bios i've done it before i've done it both ways i've done the q flash style and i've done it with just powering the board up and letting it go um so yes bios flashback and to set your BIOS up. Too bad it doesn't have dual BIOS. And too bad it doesn't have any power and restart buttons on the board. That would have definitely gave it right up there. But that's why it's in the higher to mid-range level. If it would have had those few things, I'd have to say it was in a, the high-range board area. A restart, a power button on the board, it would be perfect. They've got little switches. That's what I'm going to end up using um, to power the board. It does, like I said, I like the little LED. Plus you have your little, little lights right there, your little LED lights. You can count the, the blinking in it, the color of them, if there's something wrong with it. Again, it takes 128 gigabytes of RAM, four sticks, with the Ryzen 5, 5000 series. I'm sorry. Yes the um, 56, 58, so on. You get better performance running four sticks versus the old school where the old the AMD and the Intel boards that you were better off running your dual memory in two different slots. Why? It's just a new configuration, I guess. So again, there we have it. I'm gonna wrap it up. I wanted to do something a little bit different. I hope somebody gets something out of this. If not, give me a thumbs up. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> I appreciate it. So I hope everybody has a, uh, the weekend's coming. So everybody stay safe. Have a good one. Take care.